All right, let's take a look at the second FRQ on the BC exam for this one, All right? So this is the calculator question here. Oh, interesting, it's, well, let's take a look. I won't pull up the calculator yet. So as usual, there's no solutions uh, released yet when I'm making this video. So if there's any corrections or mistakes I make, I will put them in as a pinned comment uh, in the video. So I have a particle from zero to pi is moving along the curve, so its position is given by this, x is not explicitly given, and y of t is given by that. It is known that dx dt equals this, at time t equals zero, the particle is position one zero. Find the acceleration vector at time t equals one, show the setup for your calculations. All right, so the acceleration is the, is equal to the derivative of the velocity, which is the second derivative of the position vector, which is really like x double prime, y double prime in terms of vector notation. You know dx dt is this, so really, you, you, like basically, you know, um, for this guy, we're just going to do the second derivative. We're going to do the derivative of this guy um, for the x component. And the y component, we're just going to use this. So for example, you're just going to say d dt of dx dt, comma, the second derivative of dt squared of like, you know, the, this guy, 2 sine t or something like that, right? And they want it at t equals 1. And we're just going to use a calculator to compute that, right? So I want the derivative of this guy at 1. So let's plug that into our calculator because you could do you could do the derivative by hand. Um, you know, I think it's just good practice to use the calculator um, just because most of you tend not to be. Um, you can always confirm it with, uh, so dyd, so like it's that one. And then a lot of you just haven't had a lot of practice with calculators. So I just want to show that for any of you who want to do that. So the first vector, I'm going to do the dy dt. So I'm going to do math n derivative dy dx of y varies y1. And we're going to do at t equals 1. That gives me the first derivative of dx dt, which is, you know, second derivative dx dt. So this is going to be the vector negative 1.444. And then 2 sine of t, if you take the second derivative of that, that one you can do. Derivative is negative, so dy dt is given by negative 2 cosine of t. And then the sec second derivative is going to be negative 2 sine t. And so that's going to be negative 2 sine of 1. Make sure you're in radian mode when you did that. That's negative 1.683. Okay, so that is the acceleration vector there. Find the first time at which the speed of the particle is 1.5. Show the work that leads to your answer. So we want the speed, which is the magnitude of the velocity vector, to equal 1.5. Okay, so how do we get the velocity vector? That's the basically the derivative of x prime squared plus y prime squared. You take the velocity vector and do Pythagorean theorem for that. So that's going to be square root. x prime, we know, is e cosine of t. So this is e cosine of t squared plus y prime, y prime is negative 2 cosine t, which is negative 2 cosine of t squared. And I want to know when this is equal to 1.5, okay? So we might as well, so we're just going to use a calculator for this part. This is not something I can analytically figure out by hand. So we're just going to go to our calculator and um, I'm not going to graph this one. You can undo that equal sign so it doesn't graph it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to graph this thing and set it equal to 1.5. So this is going to be um, e to the cosine. Oops. I messed that up. All right, e to the cosine of x. Uh, I need to put in, let me see. If I square it, then plus. Oh, it's still under the square root. That's good. Uh, and that's going to be just negative 2 cosine of t x squared. And that's that. Okay, so we're going to sketch that. We're also going to sketch 1.5. And we want to find where they intersect at. That's one way to do it. So we're only going from 0 to pi. So let's put from 0 to pi. Be careful there. You didn't want to go too far there. And then we want to go from 0 to, say, like 3. Because I want them to intersect at 1.5. So there is the equation being plotted. Okay, and while it's thinking, let's read the question. When is speed equal to 1.5 and show your answer? And then we are just going to find those intersection points. Calculate intersect. First curve, second curve, and then your guess is just somewhere close by. Let the calculator work it out. 
And so that occurs at t equals 1.0547, okay? And then we'll second calculate the intersect number five, first curve, second curve, and then just pick somewhere closer to that intersection point so the calculator can do its work. And that's going to be 2.0869. Now they want to know the, the first, oh, they want to know the first time. So the first time is just this one here. Okay, it says first time. Find the slope of the tangent of the path of the particle at t equals one. Find the x coordinates of the position of particle at time t equals one. Show the work leads your answer. Okay, slope of the tangent line is basically I want to find dy dx at t equals one. That's going to be dy dt over dx dt at, at t equals one. So um, dy dt is negative two cosine of one divided by plugging one into this guy, e to the cosine of one. Um, uh, find the x-coordinate of the position. Okay, so so it's two questions, right? So find the slope of the tangent line. Let's just focus on that one first. So this is just gonna be um, negative two cosine of one divided by e to the cosine of one Oops, What's that. Okay, so I get that's negative 0 0.6295. So that's a slope of the tangent line. And let's just confirm that that looks like about one. Actually, this is the, find the slope of the tangent line at time t equals one. It doesn't look like it should be negative. So I'm a little confused as to what, um, dy dt. I don't know why I said this is negative two cosine. Why did I have this negative this whole time? Oh, jeez. That's why I use a calculator for all this. Um, this negative, that didn't affect that. No effect on there, but it made this positive. Okay. Okay, well, um, luckily, I did not mess anything up too bad. Um, this one would have been negative, uh, but I got a positive number there. So, okay, so I corrected. So those of you who you know, corrected me a lot earlier saying I made a mistake there. That's fine. But I was like looking at the graph and be like, oh, that doesn't look like a negative slope. So that looks a little bit weird that I got a negative number. So I'm glad I checked that at least. So clearly made a mistake early on that carried forward. Um, now we want to find the x coordinate of the position at time t equals one. So we only know dx dt, but we know that the integral of dx dt dt, if you go from a to b is going to be obviously the this is the velocity ish, it's going to be the change in the position x of b minus x of a. So we know the position at t equals zero, we know it's at position one zero. So the x coordinate when so we know x of zero is equal to one, for example, because this is the time. So we can do the integral from zero to say some value one of dx dt, dt is going to be x of the position at 1 minus x of 0, which is 1. So we're just going to add 1 to this thing. 1 plus the integral of 0 to 1 of dx dt is going to give you x of 1. That's going to be the position. So we're going to use that on our calculator here. And um, let's see. So um, we're going to do 1 plus math integrate. And I think I still have it as y1. So we just do vars y1 dx, and then I might just double check that just to make sure I didn't delete it. Y1 is still that thing, okay? So we're just gonna three point three four two is what I got here. So three point three four two. So that means x of one is equal to three point three four two. Did I have that right? Three point three four two. My working memory is terrible these days. Find the total distance traveled by the particle over the time interval from zero to pi, show the setup. So we're just gonna integrate from zero to pi of the speed vector. We already just calculated the speed vector right here. E to the cosine of t um, squared plus two co I mean, you should actually, actually, I'm sorry. To get the full points, you should probably write it as the square root of say, x prime squared plus y prime squared dt. And then, you know, you're just using this thing here. So then we're just going to do, and we already put that into the calculator. I guess I can make a slight change, but because I square it, um, it didn't matter that it screwed up the, the negative sign here. So I can delete that, but it didn't, it didn't actually affect anything. Luckily, so math um, integrate 
from zero to one, zero to pi, zero to pi, right? That's what I said, zero to pi. And we're gonna use y2, because I put it in as y2 into my function calculator. y2 dx, I get 5.833, 5 5.833, 5.833. Okay, cool, that's part D. All right, other than my mess up on derivative sine is not negative cosine, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, everything else I think is correct.